tuned in to the country with show. <laughs> so when you come, anyway, we'll talk about that later, not, later on. Let's yes, not, not let's not, not keep the people in suspense anymore. Mm -hmm. Norman Lynch, I'm asking you to do the honors mm -hmm. to introduce a oh young man God. who's standing in the wings, who I am just blown away. But I'll I'll talk to him mm -hmm. personally. But I think it's only right and fitting right. that you do the introduction for the guest who is here waiting in the wings to come on the Conduit Street show. So let's just get it on the road right about now. Well, first of all, Sharon, thanks for having us on, on the show. Thanks for agreeing. Thanks for asking for um, Raymond Price you... to be on, on your show. No brainer. Um, one, of the, one, one of the reasons, you know, Raymond wanted to do this show is because the Conduit show is about having conversations. It's not about <laughs> interviews. It's having conversations. Yes. And one thing I know about Raymond is that he's a conversationalist. He, like he likes to um, have conversations with people so that individuals understand where he's coming from. And um, I believe that uh, whether he is in the public sphere as a media personality, whether he's in the public sphere as a politician or just a, a, an advocate, he's always working on behalf of the people. He's mm. from the people, he's by the people, and, for and the he people. is for, for the, the people. I like that. Sounds that like is... a campaign slogan. <laughs> I'm, not, like I'm not campaigning. I'm not, not campaigning. campaigning. I'm not yeah. campaigning. We're just having a conversation. I'm not campaigning. And, um, you know, Raymond and I communicate often, and mm -hmm. I know of his strengths, you know, and I think that um, when the opportunity presented itself for him to come to New York as the keynote speaker for the 82nd anniversary of the Jamaica Progressive League, I told him, jump at it, you do know, it. do it. And um, as you know, and, and um, he, he had other engagements um, mm -hmm. in another state, not mm -hmm. this week, but well, next, next week. week. And he quickly said, yes, he's going to do it. And, you know, the president of um, the, the Jamaica Progressive League, as well as other stakeholders, were extremely happy that he took it, that, that he took their invitation. And so so he's here. Um, I'm ha he's somebody I'm happy to call a friend. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure that you guys are going to have a fantastic conversation. If I could stop smoking. I want, I know, I know, I know <laughs> that, I, I know, I know my that, I bag. know I'll that the, the conduit oh, show. Emma, thank you. Why do I look so horrible? And I know that huh? the conduit show is all about um, conversations, but I do not want it to ease up. I want the questions. You know, uh, we'll try and, <laughs> I want the questions, we'll but try. enough we'll of try. me, enough of me, enough. enough of me, and blessed love to all your listeners in the UK, the New York Tri State uh, area, Jamaica. in Canada, and of course in Jamaica, yes. Angela Anderson, Melberton, Mel Newell, bless up, Mel. bless, up, bless up yourself, bless up yourself. Enough of me, it's Carlin. time to, it's Cardin. Oh, hey, how are you doing, Cardin? It's time to have Raymond Price. On, in the studio. In the studio. And it's very it. informal, Raymond. Yeah. He'll be the fine. Crazy show. He'll be fine. Trust me. Thank you so much. So a little, but you know what? Um, I need to get my fan because I'm going to melt, but it's in my bag. Anyway, we Mr. Are. Price. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming at short notice. I, I want you to understand that this is not normally how things are done, but, um, we met yesterday for the first time. Yes. Congratulations, and, by the way. Oh, thank you she so much. You may not have said it wow, yet. Wow, I didn't. Oh, um, gosh, you're going to block my spot the, now. The, the, the important bit of news that we want you to, to hear oh, is that our hostess yesterday received an award from the Jamaica Progressive League for her Community. selfless contribution oh, to the diaspora, Please to the Jamaican diaspora. Me. And we say the Jamaican diaspora, but what I learned yesterday is that you do far more in terms of helping to support uh, members of immigrant populations uh, mm. or whoever Please is don't in embarrass need. Me. No, you're not. Please you're don't not. embarrass no, me. No, the intention is not to embarrass. The intention is always to give credit where credit is due and uh, to say thank you. Thank you and very let me much. Extend what was said yesterday by the officials at the Jamaica Progressive League and congratulate you. You're one of. Uh, an excellent, a stellar group of honorees yesterday. Well, I, you know, I think um, the event just came together and the space was small. And I, what I wanted to say, I'm, I'm in a way, I'm
I'm glad that the um, awardees didn't get an opportunity to speak because it would have dragged out the event. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes you're expecting one thing and you get something completely different. And I'm getting goosebumps because I'm like, um, I believe in God. Yes. And I think that the event yesterday was something that was orchestrated by divine intervention. intervention yeah. Because to get a call and to, to get through to the right channels and to have you there, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, I don't think you realize the impact that you made. I was sitting in the audience when you were making your presentation. And the fact that the Congresswoman Yvette Clark kept saying, I have to leave, I have to leave, I have two more events to, mm -hmm. to attend. And do you realize that she stayed yeah. for your whole presentation? Uh, she was she was very gracious. I mean, as I have also been a representative, so I know that on many occasions your schedule reflects it's very tight. Yeah, a lot of activities that evening. And she was very clear. First to begin with, I, I want to say because I have a number of persons, my own mother included. Go when ahead. she saw the photographs on social media, she called and she says, You were at an event where Congresswoman Yvette Clark was going to be present and you didn't even tell me. And I was like, I did not know. I mean, when she walked in and the electricity level changed in the room, I, you know, and then I recognized her and her mother, her mother Una Dr. Clark. Una Clark. And uh, it changed, as you said, it was it was divine. It changed it was, the chemistry, it, it whole, changed electricity. That event took on a whole nother level. When you look around at the fact that Byron LeBeach, yes, who was a part of the 1952 Olympic Olympics team, that, gold medal team, along with, uh, you see, most Americans know Herb McKinley. Herb McKinley, McKinley because, yeah. and Arthur Wint. Those, yeah. But Byron LeBeach was a part of that team, yes. as I said. And he was the youngest member of the, of the quartet and he too he stood there a very accomplished businessman a very accomplished yes. member of, of the, the african-american community yes. in new york a accomplished member of the league and himself a worthwhile celebrity and he stood there and he was very kind he shared his information the struggles he went through when his food business started yes um, back in the days when to be black was, was like, not a good thing very difficult yeah, to break into the industry uh, with the established um corporations mm -hmm. that he had to compete with and when you hear baron labiche say you are raymond price and x and y and z i was like I'm in a I'm in a twilight zone. No, you know, so that was not. really that was really one of the top experiences yesterday. You well. were meant to be at that event yeah. because I want to tell you, Mr. Price, the Please, impact of your speech. Say Raymond or Raymond. I'm out Raymond. of here. <laughs> Raymond, Raymond. Yes. yes, I don't like it too because it makes yeah. me much older than I think I am. <laughs> so it's Sharon. I'm here yeah. talking with Raymond Price, and we're going to get to who Raymond Price is, but we're just talking about the impact. He was the keynote speaker at the Jamaica Progressive League's 82nd anniversary event held in the Bronx, which I was an honoree. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And to my fellow honorees, your accomplishments are nothing to be sneezed at. And Absolutely. I I believe every honoree, their award and recognition was deserved. Yes. So it just makes it so much sweeter. I, I, but I just want to say to uh -huh. you, um, Raymond, I don't think you realize the impact of your keynote speech. When you, yeah. had you met um, Congresswoman Clark before? Nope. When, for me, when you turned and you said uh, how an action and the work that she was doing in Congress impacted young Jamaicans like yourself, mm -hmm. I was like, blow wall. I'm lost for words. <laughs> I haven't heard blow wall. And, in a while. and yep, she's Jamaican. Yes. That just confirmed and, it. <laughs> well, Jamaican heritage. Yes. And even more importantly, it touched Yvette. Yeah. What had happened is that um, after the global recession, the Jamaican economy collapsed because the this then, is in 2007. This is in 2007, Seven, 2008. Seven, eight. Yes. The then administration was just abysmal, totally ill prepared. Mm. Um, what you want to do when you're in government, you want to set signals that maintain confidence. And I think they oversold confidence because one of the phrases that was used, certainly by the then Minister of Tourism, who is, by the way, the Minister of Tourism now, again now. Yes. Um, the Honourable, the Honourable Ed Edmund Bartlett. Ed Bartlett, yes. He said that the global recession would have been good for Jamaica. 
he meant it from a mathematical perspective that because the recession was on and the exchange rate dynamic that vacationing in Jamaica would be a lot easier would be a lot more easier. economic yes. so people instead of vacationing in, in Turks and Caicos or mm -hmm. elsewhere would opt to come to Jamaica mm. what they totally misunderstood and underestimated was that the scope and depth of the recession, of the recession was yes. so bad that people would not be vacationing to try anywhere at all. yes yes so our balance of payments went totally in the wrong direction and we had to re-enter an agreement, a borrowing agreement with the IMF. Mm. The management of that agreement also collapsed. And uh, by the time we had general elections in 2011, we then had a new prime minister in the most honorable Portia Singh Similar, and Dr. Peter Phillips mm -hmm. was the minister of finance. If you hear his story as to what he went through renegotiating and getting the interest mm. and the attention and the respect of the International Monetary Fund, mm. it was without a doubt, and, and to paraphrase what he said, it was the most challenging experience of his entire life. I can imagine. And by extension, the Jamaican economy. Mm. And as I said yesterday, I wasn't being euphemistic, I wasn't using hyperbole. The Jamaican economy went to the brink of peril. People like Congresswoman, Yvette Clark worked behind the scenes and connected connected Project Jamaica and the concept of a Jamaica recovering from a great economic um, deep disaster. Economic disaster. A meltdown. And uh, she made connections with other like-minded persons. And as I said, the doors to the multilaterals were literally closed to Jamaica. And uh, those in Jamaica watching the live feeds and listening to our voices would understand that it, right now, and for many years, it had become the case that when a teacher is to be paid at the end mm. of the month, that salary is credited to his or her account. The same for the police, the same for the military, the same for the nurses and the doctors. And uh, that was at risk. Mm. And uh, had it not been for the work of of, of uh, Congresswoman Clark and others, when you go into the bank machine at the end of the month and it check your balance, no there would have been no money there. My goodness. Um, it was really, uh, uh, it was really a scary time. Last for words, just say it was a scary time. And the doors that were close to us, literally Yvette Clark became the key. And she slowly and stridently Kept made those connections, away. reopened the doors, put the, the, the sound of the country Jamaica in the ears of the right people until eventually the work being done by the administration in Kingston was met by the silent advocacy that she was leading here in the United States. And slowly but surely, the windows were reopened and then the doors, a new agreement was signed and it really has turned around Jamaica for the first time in the history of independent Jamaica a blueprint for the economic development had been designed and forged by a Jamaican government. Because what happened after independence, we had then had Being tourism, we to... had bauxite, mm. we had sugar, but well, we've had sugar since slavery, 1655, mm. Um, mm. God save the queen. And uh, no, no offense to your <laughs> British background None or taken. to your British listeners. No, none taken. Um, but we were, we were already practiced in the colonial um, mentality and, and the, the colonial way. Mm -hmm. mentality. Mm -hmm. So the work was done in Jamaica. The raw material was excavated in Jamaica, but the capital was earned and exported Elsewhere. to the United Kingdom, to Canada, to the United States. What happened between 2012 and 2016, and we're seeing the benefit of that hard work now, is that the administration renegotiated the concept of economic development in Jamaica. It was not easy. Um, a lot of the decisions that were taken made the administration unpopular. Mm. If it wasn't for the, the, the personal gift of the then prime minister and her, um, her imprimatur and the cachet that the finance minister had in terms of being able to show over his political career successes, successes. in the various mm -hmm. ministry, the level of confidence within Jamaica 
uh, mm. as well, the private sector partners, the PSOG and the related associations, for the first time, the only time in my lifetime, I could relate to the sense that the key stakeholders of Project Jamaica understood the severity, became engaged, and moved in a particular direction, which is what led us to where we are now. And again, um, if you could quantify what uh, Congresswoman Yvette Clark did, um, I don't think any calculator would have been able to show the numbers. Interestingly, she pointed out last night, she um, made the audience aware that she is to be bestowed with the Order, Order of Distinction, Distinction Commander in Class in October at the Heroes Day activities at, um, at the residence of the Head of State, King's House. Um, still <laughs> Jamaica. They need to call it, they, they need to change it, that name. Of course, call it Jamaica House. Or the People's or the House. People's yeah. Boom. Touch Boom. me. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, maybe not. The, you know, there's going to be opposition to that. Oh, yeah. I need to stop. Okay, oh, I'm on there, a roll. There, oh, there's going to be opposition <laughs> to that. I mean, it, the, the, the United Kingdom has certain traditions which Jamaica inherited. And one of them is that the official state opening of parliament each year, you have, well, in England, they call it the Queen's Speech outright. Mm. In mm -hmm. Jamaica, it is still referred to a more medieval term, the throne speech. And I made a, a recommendation when I was in parliament um, for 50th anniversary of political independence. And because prime ministers since Michael Manley, then Edward Siago, then PJ Patterson, mm -hmm. then Portia Simpson Miller, then Bruce Scolding, and now then Andrew, Andrew Holness, Holness had all expressed that it is time for us to complete our sovereignty and repatriate the office of the head of state to a Jamaican. And mm. uh, I said, well, let us take the small steps. Becoming a republic is an ideal that I hold close to my heart. But it's it's so fun. Do you, so do you think, because I understand that this is why Michael Manley's father, yes. his vision for Jamaica failed because right. he was the one that suggested this however many years ago. I, I, do you think the time is right now for Jamaica think, to be a republic? I think the time is right. But Jamaicans are also, the Jamaican personality is hard to pin down. But this, we're very conservative, so we're mm. resistant to change. Mm. But we are very dynamic, very, mm. um, very effervescent, very electric, but still very conservative. So what is required constitutionally to become a republic takes a lot if it's all going to be done in one fell swoop. So I had suggested the longest journey begins with one step and mm -hmm. milestones are symbolic and they're also, um, they also help to fuel momentum. Mm -hmm. So I suggested, let us rename the throne speech to the people's speech because everything that the governor general reads in the throne speech is really prepared for him by the government elected by the people mm. and sets out how the people's resources or taxes but will do be we spent. Need, speaking about that, do we need a governor general then? Oh no, Isn't I, he I, the representative of the, the sovereign, the yes, queen? Yes, he's, he's a sovereign's if, representative. If you're an independent nation, why do we need? Well, because of how our independence was achieved and mm. negotiated. Um, and I guess people like Sir Alexander Bustamante and Norman Mali at the time thought that the change from a colony to an independent nation was significant already. Were I alive back then, mm. I would have been like Marcus Garvey, advocating for republic status immediately. Mm. But they, it was always a work in progress. Baby steps. Baby steps. But I don't think 56 years later, the, um, the framers of the independence institute, uh, in the constitution had expected that the baby that would have been stepping would have been a baby turtle. Mm. I thought they meant a baby <laughs> human. Um, making human steps. Making not, human steps. No not, steps not, at all, not, right. Not, not no steps at all that were not measurable. I, I think it's it's very interesting that you bring, the, bring up this point. And as Lawman said, I have some talking points, but the conversation is going a way yeah. that I think is much more natural. Which was what was good about yesterday, because um, I, I remember saying in my presentation that my grandmother and all of our grandmothers, the, I, the, the, the composite Jamaican grandmother says, walk for nothing better than sit down for nothing. So I've been invited to speak at events before. Um, this one really fell out of thin air and the opportunity was presented to me. It was not planned. And a lot of people will not believe it was not planned because they're like, oh, Raymond Price, 
former politician, Yvette Clark, Congresswoman, or oh, some great design and organization God's was behind design. it. Father God. God's um, design, because it just came together, together. so perfectly. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you made a point also, Raymond, and, and I want to touch on this because this is, I know, a complaint that the current president of the League has, Sadie Campbell, that people do not know the extent of the League's history yeah. and they do not appreciate what the League has done for Jamaicans yeah. in Jamaica and in diaspora. And I'm not going to pretend that that doesn't capture me as well. In and you admitted of, you admitted right, as much knowing. um so as i was saying our we've heard grandmothers to say walk for nothing better than sit down for nothing and i i'm sometimes accused of pondering and overthinking everything to the nth degree <laughs> and then i decided to say you know what i'm gonna go and i I'm am so happy i was there because one of the did. things i learned is that they pro we knew that to put it in a way the progressive league was the parent or the catalyst to the jamaica independence the, mm -hmm, movement mm -hmm. what i did not know is that those early meetings that were attended by norman manley and sir alexander bustamante in london that the conversations across the jamaican society mm -hmm. that those were sponsored financially by the progressive league by ordinary Jamaicans. It's so Red Brown yeah. and, and all of the early founders, founders. of the League that and people don't even know their names. names. And in the same way that the history of Marcus Garvey is not taught to Jamaican children, yeah. the, the history of the, the, the League, League, the history of Jamaica itself. Yeah. But yet still a child can tell you the whole history of the kings and queens of England. Of England. There's something wrong with that yeah. picture. And it, it kind of goes in with the changes that are being proposed. The moment I started to go through the anniversary booklet, um, greetings from the, His Excellency, the Most Honorable Governor General. Greetings from Her Excellency Audrey Marks, mm -hmm. Jamaica's ambassador, ambassador to Washington. Yes. Greetings from Congresswoman Clark, from the head of the New York Assembly, from the leader of the opposition, mm -hmm. um, the Jamaican consulate sent a representative mm -hmm. in Patrick Maitland. Mm -hmm. I, I felt good because then I knew that people understood through these personalities that it was understood how important the connection was, but that Jamaicans my age and younger may not know. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is that some of these early pioneers cleaned the streets. Some of them worked in the subways. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they had no health care. They had no insurance, but they had a fervor. That, and, a passion. and a passion that there could be a nation, nation building. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I mean, this is nineteen thirty-six. Oh my goodness! I'm, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just. There's hope there because hope. I know you're not alone. Yeah. Oh no. Luckily. But as a, as a, I mean, tell us about your time in politics because you actually were an elected official I how was. was that experience because we understand there was some controversy yeah. with your appointment yeah. and you walked away well um let me respond to that directly i did not walk away okay. um the there is an internal organization and the internal organization took a decision mm -hmm. that i would not be allowed to, to run, run again. Okay. again in that seat at for that election. Mm -hmm. um, and it it was a difficult experience because for one, if we if we rewind four years prior, I wasn't to have run in the first place. Um, someone else had been selected for that constituency. Mm -hmm. And for reasons I don't know, that person's candidacy was um, revoked and I was asked to stand in. Mm. Early in the, so that was for the December 29, 2011 mm -hmm. elections. And I had officially become the candidate on the 23rd of November. Uh, and which, which region was this for? This it's, was for North, the conduit listeners, yes. Northeastern St. Elizabeth. Thank and you. for your listeners who are familiar with Jamaica, that included like Santa Cruz, Braze River, Balaclava, Aberdeen, and, and um, rural communities like that, including quaint ones like Bagdale Mountain, Domoto, um, Leeds, Button. Um, There's still lots Savannah. of places I need to go to in Jamaica because I've never heard of any of these places. <laughs> and everybody in those places I have spoken about will receive you with open mm. arms when you are able to go. Um, so I became a candidate in a very strange set of experiences. Kind of by default. Right, by default. 
And early in 2012, a constituent came into my office and said to me, if you're driving your car and your tire puncture, what you do? So I said, put on a spare. And I said, when you fix the spare, what you do? So I said, well, then I would put the fixed tire on the back. So I said, oh, you drive one of them car there. So I said, what if you drive one of the car where the spare tire is a donut? And that bus. And that, right. <laughs> so I said, well, when I fix the tire, I take off the donut and put on by the original tire. Well, in, mm. in colorful Jamaican language, I said, well, you is the, you know what, donut. You is the donut tire. Ooh. You are the spear and the real tire fix. So you're going to come back off. This would have been in about March of 2012. That was a constituent. That was a constituent. And I, would have, I, I hmm. hadn't even completed 100 days. And I hmm. took that. Yes, it was A, it was humiliating. Her, her B, it was ominous. And C, it left me with only one option. And that was to make hay while the sun shone or while the sun shines. Mm. But this is past tense. And hay we did make because mm. you have the brand new Aberdeen High School coming out of that period. You have the modernization of the Sydney Pagan Agricultural School to the Sydney Pagan STEM Academy, the first of its kind in the English speaking Caribbean. Um, we had schools like Roses Valley Primary and Brazeville Primary that had not been expanded since they were constructed almost 100 years before that now had modern facilities and reading resource rooms. So I became almost obsessed with representing the people because I knew being the spare tire, any minute now, the donut tire could have bust. And in fact, it did. Um, but truth be told, and anybody wants to fact check it, go right ahead. For the 48 months that I was a member of parliament, outside of some very obvious personalities who maintained a focused and entrenched opposition campaign. And I'm actually grateful to them. You, people who swayed to you uh, no, I, I'm and your action. Uh, right. And I'm grateful to the, 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 the unending opposition. For the because it spurred you months. on. Because it spurred me on. There were persons, my colleagues in other parts of the country, hmm. who enjoyed a, a higher level of comfort but didn't show the kind of achievement on behalf of the people who had elected them hmm. that were achieved in the partnership we had with those willing souls who were willing to, at least at the very end, say, well, uh, we, there's an expression, one day busher is still busher. So you are a one-term MP, but you're going to be gonna the work MP, with we're going to mm -hmm. work with you. And I didn't achieve anything on my own because nothing that is worthwhile mm. is achieved um, by any individual mm. alone. But... Uh, for example, the, the most modern clinic in the public sector in Jamaica is a Santa Cruz clinic. It has a dental clinic. It has a, a prenatal clinic. It has a maternity clinic. Um, people, when I went there as MP the first time, I looked up in the roof. I could see the sky. That's not the case anymore. And to this day, and in fairness to people, including some who had hard-held views of as I said, my entrenched opposition are able to say, well, you know, at least you did do that. At least you did do that. And I, I'm grateful for the experience. Uh, it's so funny because um, we in the diaspora, you, you know, the, the opportunity that you being here today is affording members of the diaspora to actually feel as though they are really a part of Jamaica in your personage yeah. who's bringing from the ground experience that's so invaluable yeah. because we don't often get a chance to sit and have honest conversation non-partisan yeah. conversation because you're not telling me what the pnp did and yeah. you understand me so this it, i like to talk to people who understand that jamaica is not ruled by one party or another or for the benefit of one party or another it's for the constituents of the country, country. and what you're telling me yeah are you gonna run again raymond <laughs> please tell me that you are or is it a secret are you thinking about it it, it, it has it, it has passed me thinking about it. Offers are now on the table. Um, I've done many jobs before 
um, including my present job. Which, tell but us briefly I, about that and then answer the question about will you run again? <laughs> All right. Well, the point I was going to make is that no other project, no other job that I've ever participated in took my entire family to work each day because people would see my sisters or my mother or other close members of my family on the road and it, their remarks were not always positive mm -hmm. because we still, that's part of our culture. Mm -hmm. when we, the ignorance. When we vex, we vex. When we're glad, Everybody. we're glad, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So a decision to re-enter representative politics on the front line was mine alone to make the last time because I didn't understand what the it ramifications. came with. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and my party was in need and my party said to me, uh, through my party leader, um, Comrade Portia Sim similar, she says, I'm going to need you to go to St. Elizabeth and do some work. And uh, what she, it, I discovered she meant was, we're going to pull the person that was there and you will be the candidate. And I didn't get any time to contemplate. I, and I was happy to serve. Mm. Really, I was honored to serve. And serve well. And serve well. This time around, um, with the last two years, especially of being there for my family, the way my family was there for me, with younger members of my family, um, toddlers and newborns and, and stuff like that, I have to make sure that I'm not taking any decision in a rushed way that will injure their opportunity. And I'll say something else, that I have to make sure that I am a credit and a value and an asset to the team of candidates and to the prospect of the prime ministership of Dr. Peter Phillips. Um, whether I run or not is a matter of geography, mm. but uh, and that's personal. Mm. But this is bigger. The, the epoch into which Jamaica <laughs> is entering is bigger than just me. But, but, um, but, but, but I, I, I take seriously the fact that two years later, persons are saying, you have a role to play. And the role that people are speaking about is in representative politics. Mm. I'll, I'll contemplate it seriously. And I'll, you'll be among the first to know that the answer is a yes. You know what? I'm going to respect that answer. I may not agree with it, but yeah. I totally understand that, you know, you have to take into consideration how your family will be affected because it's not just you yeah. being in the public eye. And I can see that you're a very caring, empathetic, considerate young man. But may I beg you to mm -hmm. think <laughs> carefully because y you are... Seeing you, I was going to say performance, but that yeah. would be doing you a disservice because it wasn't a performance. It was heartfelt. Uh -huh. Every single word that was contained in your keynote speech. And I noticed you weren't looking at any notes. <laughs> it came from the heart. It did. It and, did. and the way you tied everything together from your thanks to Yvette Clark to mm -hmm. the very last word that you end, people were, I was looking around. You didn't see. I was looking around at people in the audience and every eye was turned on you and people were saying, yes. And I'm saying, what a brilliant young man. Nice. I said, this is the kind of leadership. This is the kind of representation that we need in Jamaica. We need new ideas. Where is the baton being passed? Mm -hmm. Some people, it's time to retire. Give the, you. I've heard it said on, uh, on, our local one of our local radio stations they had a program called giddy Utah bus yes yeah. it's time for jamaica to giddy Utah bus in terms of leadership we look at um the current prime minister andrew holness he's the youngest prime minister mm -hmm. it's time for us to move into a change i mean i would never be running for politics well apart from <laughs> the fact that i'm not born in jamaica so it, i couldn't yeah. but there has to come a time when you have to know your limitations and say very soon, the Conduit Show is going to hand over to someone else to carry on that work. Mm -hmm. You are waiting in the wings, and I'm sure there are many others like you on both sides of the aisle who are waiting for that chance. And I think the powers that be have to understand that I don't know if the people of Jamaica are savvy enough, if they're educated enough, mm -hmm. if they have the will 
to force that change? Well, um, as we say in Jamaica, nothing has happened before its time. True. I think the, there are obvious manifestations, there are obvious signs of that change coming. Mm -hmm. um, the thing about an outlook, I think, is more important than dates of birth. And I also believe that you can have very young people whose outlook is not progressive is not progressive and That's you can true. have persons of different ages That's that true. have a progressive outlook the collective i agree with you is moving in the right direction mm. and the, the the challenges that face jamaica today by the way in in my view um a generation ago the biggest challenge that faced us would have been sovereign debt mm. today the biggest challenge that faced us face us is the impact of climate change on national development mm. and I, I think the the thinking around that the approach towards those solutions are the areas in which i am invested and that's the area that excites me even the concept of saying yes definitely um i would re-enter representational politics i'm not playing hard to get i i'm taking so you're saying you, you have steps. a portfolio that you're looking to, to manage? like? Well, um, it's not just that it's a portfolio I'd be interested in managing. Mm. It's also my academic background. And I believe that the way we, we approach national development must, going forward, require a bio a bioeconomy a bio-based economy so that takes okay. these things into consideration so that's interesting then because we know that people in the diaspora are are concerned about the fact that uh the chinese mm -hmm. are having a foothold in jamaica and we understand that the um the environment in in Beijing, maybe yes. not the best in the world. Mm -hmm. And there is some concern. The, is this the plan for Jamaica? And here you are talking about recognizing climate change. I understand that the Prime, Prime Minister of Jamaica made his presentation at the United Nations mm -hmm. and his keynote speech was about climate, climate change, change. Yes. and how it affects the Caribbean. Yeah. So how do how do you reconcile the two realities now? Well, um, without creating a, an international diplomatic incident, <laughs> I, I, have yes, created, seen, created. I have seen references to the Beijing style development as just poor concrete, that their development is poor concrete and grow um, kind of a thing that might work in. And it doesn't, large... by the way, but China takes up most of Asia. Jamaica mm. is a small so you island, can't just pour concrete exactly, everywhere. with a highly diverse and a, a, a highly endemic um, environment. So our approach to development has to be more careful. It has to mm. be about sustainable development. Sustainability, um, yes. Fortunately, we have the Vision 2030 um, map for national development, which was conceptualized in 2006. Uh, while Portia Simpson Miller was the prime minister and every succeeding prime minister since then has mm. endorsed it as the as a map for going forward. It coincides with a lot of the goals in the sustainable development goals at the global level at the United Nations and persons such as myself and a team of others. You have new programs like at the University of the Technology of which I'm a part, which places sustainable energy and climate change at the center of how we plan the new economy. Hmm. And um, therefore, some sections of the country that were more important 40 years ago are going to decline in the level of importance and new areas like the cockpit country will emerge as the, 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 the anchor of how sustainability, sustainability how we move evolves. Forward. Because right. we, we see that climate change is real mm -hmm. and it's affecting uh, not just the Caribbean, yeah, uh, but the, in the United States as well. Right. So we have to start paying attention. Absolutely. Because the hurricanes are getting fiercer. Yeah. And acting just crazy. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of a hurricane leaving a place and then going back. Yeah. Um, or you know. or a hurricane forming in the Caribbean basin and mm. becoming a Category Five in a matter of days. Mm. Usually, we are accustomed to it Building. forming off the coast of West Africa. Africa West Africa. We Africa. watch it as it comes across mm -hmm. the Atlantic. No hurricanes are forming right there in the Caribbean Basin. And it's interesting because one of the things I'm doing while I'm here is focusing on how Manhattan as an island 
is, is responding is to climate change. I mean, we're seeing where parks on the borders of the on, on the banks of the East River and mm -hmm. the West River mm -hmm. are being raised by 60 feet, levees rather. Yes. And and on top of the levee will be a park. And that, that kind As of a greening approach mm -hmm. um, toward climate change adaptation and mitigation, we have nothing of that kind as yet planned for Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And this is one area where I know, um, based on my qualification, based on my experience, based on my connections here in the, U in the US and elsewhere, that that's an area where without any successful rebuttal, you cannot find another professional in Jamaica who is also Jamaican as prepared to lead that charge as I am. So, hmm, it sounds like You've got your work cut out for you. Oh, and yeah. the only way it's going to be successful is for you to get back into representational politics. So whatever I you want to say. I didn't see that And one I'm coming. not... A, but it, 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 cock more it, kill cock. You saw what she just did. <laughs> while, but I didn't see that one coming. But you know, you're in media too, right? So how am I doing? <laughs> so I made a, that, in other words, I did a rookie mistake. <laughs> you open the door and you're, I just bought you. You're, you're, you're doing right? very, very well. You're <laughs> awesome. You. It's, you're it's awesome. It's about, you know what? It's about having a conversation and putting people at ease yeah. so that they forget there are thousands of people watching and the power of the internet, things can come back to haunt you. But you yeah. know what? Oh, you're not saying forever. anything. Yeah. You're not saying anything because I feel your spirit. I feel yeah. your energy. I feel your passion. And it's genuine. I haven't said anything to you that from my, from the leader of the PNP to the governor general of Jamaica, to the persons that, that serve our food when I go to, to Cafe Blue in the morning, so a big up to Cafe Blue, or more importantly, that my close friends and family would not have heard me say, mm, um, I no longer have the advantage of privacy. Well, you're a public figure then. Right, so I have decided that I am going to feather my nests properly. Which is Hold another. on a second, hold yeah. on a second, back up a minute. <laughs> when you say feather your nest properly, as an English woman, that tells me it's not such a good thing to say. So I don't know if you want to expand yeah, on that. Please. I'm going to expand on it. In other words, because I no longer have the, the advantage of privacy, um, I ensure that I engage my mind and my ears before my mouth. So I, I oh, think about okay. what I'm saying and I, say I appreciate the ears into which I am speaking before I say it. So you will always have people who will cut and splice or or they will remove my head from, and, and I will no longer else's... have on this shirt <laughs> and I might be on some body elsewhere and stuff like that. But people who know well, Brand no. Raymond Price. Yes. Oh, oh he spoke about um, removing the British Queen as a head of state. No, yeah, that's, that's not Raymond. True. Uh, you know, he spoke about um, climate change. Yep, yeah, that's that, Raymond. Uh, right. Oh, he spoke about um, mercilessly locking up people. Not nah, Raymond. Raymond never said that. So I am confident that enough knowledge exists among the Jamaican society that if I say I'm going to do something, I'm That's going to do. get it done. And if I can't get it done alone, I'm going to pull support from wherever I can to get it done. Uh, Raymond, um, there's a comment and I'm not I'm purposely not reading the comments um, mm -hmm. because I don't want to um, uh, I can't interrupt the flow of our conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But um, one comment that I want to say, Kamita Alvarez, uh, who was actually at the event yesterday. yesterday, she's the leader of the organization Fury, which is a family yeah. unification and resettlement initiative program in Jamaica that yeah. helps to um, reintegrate those who were deported, deported Jamaicans, to Jamaica yeah. and uh, also it's it's an organization that I'm also involved with. But, yes. You know, I kind of keep those things quiet. Yes. And I don't know who would be calling me now, but I'm not answering the phone. Sorry. And it's my... I'm not... Nobody's coming for the diaspora this, the diaspora that. Mm -hmm. What would be... How would you see the role of the diaspora in helping to build the nation of Jamaica to where it should be? Right. It should have been at this stage, Already. but it's not there yet. Yeah. How can the diaspora, and not necessarily in terms of money? Right. Um, a couple of things. I'll, I'll start off with expressing thanks and gratitude um, to, the, to the diaspora. There is hardly a Jamaican 
especially at back to school, who has not received a check or a remittance or an envelope that goes into the pot to help to put the students back through school. So I want to say thanks. But our relationship going forward can't just be about the, the remittance, the two billion or so per mm -hmm. year in remittance mm -hmm. that we get, which is equivalent, by the way, to what we are earning from Bauxite and uh, more than what we're wow. earning from Sugar Now. Wow. So this is a mainstay of the Jamaican family and the Jamaican economy. Going forward, um, since I was a part of uh, somebody's very successful metaphor as a spare tile, mm -hmm. the diaspora is not the, the spare tile. The diaspora is the engine. But that's not what we feel. I, I understand that. So we know as a people, as part of the public sector, as part of the private sector, as part of public administration in Jamaica, have to realize that there are many, our cousins, my cousins and the people my age, our cousins in the diaspora, whether it's in London, in Canada, in India, in the US, wherever in the world it is, um, they have no... 20 plus years of experiences in first world societies. Mm. The same challenges that I am looking on some of the solutions next week as to how Manhattan and other parts of the United States are responding to climate change risks. You have Jamaicans, member of the Jama members mm -hmm. of the Jamaican diaspora who have that body of knowledge. So what we need to do going forward is to place the diaspora at the center as the engine of our growth and leverage no longer just economic remittance, but intellectual remittance, innovative remittance. So it doesn't surprise me that there are Jamaicans working on this project on the, on, on the, um, on the East River mm. to make that section of Manhattan more resilient mm. to, to rising, rising sea levels. Sea levels. Um, but we need that help as well in Black, in, in Black River. We need that help as well along the coast of central Kingston. And that beach um, in Kingston. Well, Hellshire. Hellshire that, Beach, which is so eroded now. Uh, exactly. Um, the Cornwall Regional Hospital, which is a sick building. Um, the, 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 the whole construction of the building envelope. Uh, we could have predicted 30 years ago that these challenges would have happened. That's now happening. And we need that architect that's not only classically trained, but understand climate change initiative and solutions so, to come back and be a part of that solution. So how do you now having this expertise, being in the party in waiting then mm -hmm. because you ran as a pnp yes. uh, official would you are you saying that you would switch sides if an offer came that's the easiest question you have asked to answer. <laughs> and it comes up Heads by the no. way it comes up so frequently i cannot understand so if you got a call today from prime minister homeless to say raymond we've been watching the work that you're doing and what you're saying makes sense we want to we want to bring you into our fold would you be, would you accept an, uh, a post? All right. So I was on Chancellor Hall at the same time as the prime minister. So if he was calling me, he wouldn't call me Raymond. He would call me by my own name, pacifist. And <laughs> I would say to him, and I would call him by his whole name. What's his whole name? Um, <laughs> Do I, tell. I, I can, I can, I can right. relate my whole name. He would have to relate his. Oh. Um, Chancellor rules apply. But um, he would know that he would be more successful calling on the Lord and he would hear the response, <laughs> burning bush or otherwise, more clearly than were he to ask for that. I don't expect such an offer would be made. Um, I think that people understand that the, the wealth of the Jamaican democracy requires strong leadership on both sides of the aisle. But you know what? Um...